What is up, guys? Steve Conroy with Lug Away Junk Removal and Demolition. Welcome to the new year, 2022. Big year for everyone, big year for junk. Keep your head on a swivel. A lot of videos coming your way. This video today is from the community page. I have posted something right after the new year um, asking for any comments or, or topics you guys want to talk about. So this guy went to tip, W-E-N-D-T, to tip. What's up, buddy? Went to tip, says, glad you're back. Thank you. It's been a long time. Day in the life videos are my favorite, but would love to hear more about how you close customers. I find that only half of the people who contact me go ahead and the other half do not. Also tips on how to deal with people's objections. Example, price is too high. So how to close customers. Only half of them book for this kid and how to deal with objections. So let's begin. I'm on my way to the dump to get rid of some stuff. Make the turn and we're off. All right, so how to close customers. You need to be a sales guy and you need to be the best sales guy and your team needs to also be salespeople. From what I have learned about any business, but I mean, especially the junk business, because that's what we're all you know here for, is you are a sales business that picks up trash. It's really what it is. You're a sales business that picks up people's junk, a sales business that does demolition, um, that's what it is. You got to be the salesman. Your team leads need to be salesmen. Your navs need to be salesmen. Anyone who works for you has got to be a salesman. And it takes time. It takes training. Um, I'm very fortunate that I'm just good at it. I didn't realize I was good at it until I put myself in the position of starting a business. And I realized, oh, well, I can really shoot the shit with anyone. I just got to tighten it up a bit and, you know, stay focused on the conversation at hand. And uh, there's little kind of things that you can do um, to steer conversations in certain ways. But uh, you, you need to be a, a salesperson. That's how you close all these jobs. So when someone calls you, you need to have full confidence in your service. You can't say... Oh, you know, hey, um, uh, you know, you answer the phone like, hey, uh, thank you for calling Lugaway. This is Steven speaking. How can I help you? And they're like, oh, I just have this, that, the other thing. It's on, you know, the second floor. I got some stuff in the basement and, and uh, there's some stuff in my backyard. And if you just give them like a one word answer and you're like, um, OK, you, you, you've lost them. You need to steer the conversation. Thank you for calling Lug Away Junk Removal and Demolition. This is Steven speaking. Oh, yeah, you got X, Y, and Z over here and over there. Well, thank you for calling today. We can definitely help you out with that. The cost is going to range from here to here. And once we get an estimate, we can firm it up on site for you. Is there any way that uh, you can get it done this week? Something like that. You got to steer them in the right direction. They called you for junk removal. So steer them to, say, book the job. Uh, there's... A whole thing that um, JRA did at JunkCon about this, um, about basically answering the phone and closing the customer. So if you're interested in that, you can reach out to them. Um, but I I'm not going to go too far into detail with how to talk to a customer on the phone. You, you need to just understand that you're a salesman, brush up on, I don't know, sales tactics and, and whatever you know it may be that you can find on YouTube. But... You need to steer the conversation um, to to booking the job. Um, so I don't know what you're doing, but that half of the people are booking with you. It could be that your prices are all messed up. You don't want to be the most... Uh, sorry, let me rephrase this. Because I was about to say you don't want to be the most expensive guy, but that's false. You don't want to be the cheapest guy because the cheapest guy can't be the best. There's no way that you can be the best junk removal company and the cheapest. 
So if there was something on Instagram, some guy said this the other day. It was like, if you went to a chiropractor, if you were like the cheapest chiropractor around, would you trust that guy to do an operation on your back? No. It's like a mental thing where you're like, ah, shit. This guy's wicked expensive, but look at his reviews and he probably does a really good job. So it's the same with junk removal. It's the same with, with any business. Uh, that doesn't mean you should skyrocket your prices, but you don't want to be the cheapest guy around. Uh, there's customers that want the cheapest guy around and they're happy to book with you, but those are shitty customers. Um, so I don't know if it's your pricing. I don't know how you operate on the phones. If who, if you know, if you are, you're answering the phones or you got someone else answering the phones, but you need to understand, you know, basically that a you're a salesman and and b you know your pricing needs to be correct uh, for your market area and you need confidence packed behind each conversation, whether that's through email or call. It's almost like you're telling the customer that they're booking the job with you, but you, but you're not telling them that, if, if that makes sense. Um, and then objections. So someone objects your, let's say your price, because that's really all it's going to be. I mean, if they object a time frame, then you just basically try and squeeze them in. Um, you, all, you obviously want to get to these junk customers as soon as possible. You try and book them same day if you can. If not, you know, a day or two after unless they say oh I need this in two weeks like I spoke to three people yesterday um, one of them was supposed to be for this week they had to push it off because the family got COVID but two of them said hey I just wanted to reach out uh, we wanted to make sure we got on your schedule we need junk in the third week of January in that case you know I'm not gonna force that guy to you know hey can you do it on Thursday because we have an open space and I want the work no you, you got to accommodate these people these people are um, these people are, uh, or sorry, you're on their dime, basically. You gotta do what they wanna do, within reason. Um, but if someone objects your price, then that's up to you, you're the business owner. If someone objects my price, I can take the job at a lower rate, I can explain to him why our service is so valuable. What you end up getting into at that point is the customer's already just, <clears throat> sorry. The customer has already decided that they do not want your service. So now you have to play the game of, okay, uh, do I really want this guy? So if you've already sent out a truck and they're there and your TL calls and he's like, hey, uh, we're on this job, you quoted him at a half load and this guy's like freaking out, he doesn't want to pay any more than, you know, X amount, which is maybe half of what we quoted him at. Then, you know, I have to make the call and say, listen, you know, let's, let's dissect this. Is it heavy material? Is it easy to access? We've definitely done jobs where the customer, you know, tries to pull one over on you and I say, you know what? Let's meet this guy in the middle, bang the job out because it's quick, get the hell out of there, and we're going to put this guy in a no-fly list, basically. Um, but if you're a single guy operation and you're the one on the truck, just like I have been, I've only moved into, you know, off the truck role very, um, you know, I've only been in this kind of position for a brief time. Um, but if you're on the truck and, you you know, you're the guy, you, you make the call. It's easy. Just... Tell them, hey, you know, we can't do this. I'm sorry. There's no way that we can do this for this rate. That's if you're on site. Usually if you're on site, some people will be pretty ballsy um, and, and you might even get in a little bit of an argument with someone, which you don't want to do. Um, you want to be, I know you want to you know, stand higher ground, but the term the customer is always right, you know, kind of serves its purpose here because you don't want someone will leave you a bad review because you were in an argument about, you know, 150 bucks at their, at their house. Um, but, uh, if it's on the phone they say, Oh my God, like $400. That's ridiculous. You can say, you know, Hey, you know, this is, you know, this is how we get to our prices. This is what we build into our costs and start rattling off expenses. It's, it's, you know, I never do that. 
I've done it once and it it didn't do anything. The guy was just like, yeah, well, I don't really care about your expenses. It's, it's too expensive for me anyways. And I said, you know what, man? That, that makes total sense. I, I completely get that. So a lot of times if someone's balking at your price, it's because they don't want to pay it either way. And nine times out of 10, that customer is going to have a shitty job for you where you show up and you say, hey, you told me it was, you know, two couches and a love seat and they were in the garage. But yeah, well, you know, we couldn't get them out and, and this and that. And now you got to go into the house and you got to move some furniture around and you're locked into that price because you didn't want to go over it and you weren't busy. So you booked the job and oh my God, it's like a, it's like a downward spiral with, with folks like that, but it happens and you can either learn from it or you can continue to operate like that. I've learned from it and hey, I've made, I, I wouldn't even say I'm making a mistake. I have chosen to take those jobs because A, they're already booked and B, like we're in the area. So it's, you know, it's, it's up to your personal choice about what, what you want to do with that. Um, I gotta answer a couple of these texts coming in right now, but that's a little short tidbit of info on that question. If you guys have any more questions or topics of interest, post them on this video, post them in the community page, like and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate all your support and I look forward to making more of these for you guys uh, in the future and happy 2022.